So in this class, I'm going to examine the limiting factors. Planning with limiting factors. All businesses are subject to constraint. All businesses are subject to constraints that restrict their output, sales, and growth. All businesses are subject to constraints that restrict their output, sales, and growth. These constraints are what we call limiting factors. Limiting factors are factors that restrict the levels of activities, the levels of growth, the levels of production of an entity. Those factors that restrict the level of performance of an organization are said to be the limiting factors. I repeat, limiting factors are those factors that restrict, that hinders, that limit, that reduce the level of production or that restrict the level of performance or performances of an organization. That is limiting factor. Our focus in this lecture is single limiting factor. Single limiting factor. And where we have multiple limiting factors, then you will be required or expected to apply the linear programming. So linear programming will be applied where we have more than one constraint. So what are the steps for solving problems involving limiting factor? Number one step. So steps. Number one is to identify. Identify the limiting factors. Identify the limiting factors. You identify the limiting factors. That is, what are those factors that restrict or that will hinder the performance or that will hinder the organization from attaining the production level they desire? That is what we mean by that. So you identify the limiting factor. Step two, calculate, calculate the contribution margin. Contribution margin. What do we mean by contribution? Contribution is sales less variable cost. Your sales or revenue less variable cost. That is contribution. So you calculate the contribution margin per unit. Your contribution margin per unit will be selling price less variable cost per unit. Selling price less variable cost per unit will give us the contribution margin. Step three, calculate the contribution. Calculate the contribution per limiting factor. Calculate the contribution per limiting factor. That is step three. That is to get the contribution per limiting factor, you divide the contribution obtained, the contribution margin obtained in step two by the unit of the limiting factor. Divide the result here, that is your contribution margin, by the unit of the limiting factor. Step four. So you rank, rank the contribution Run the contribution per limiting factor. Per limiting factor in descending. In descending order. Run the contribution per limiting factor in descending order. That is from the highest to the lowest. You rank it from the highest to the lowest. Step five. Then you prepare. You prepare the allocation table. Prepare the allocation table. Prepare the allocation table just. Prepare the allocation table just. One, you have ranking followed by product. Then we have demand. We have 
limiting factor. Limiting factor. Then we also have limiting factor allocated. Allocated. We have cumulative cumulative limiting factor. Cumulative limiting factor. Then we have balance. Finally, you have product mix. Product mix. So then step six. You have your product mix. Uh, optima optima production plan. These are the steps you need to follow when solving problems involving the limiting factors. So you follow these steps when solving problems involving the limiting factors. So now we want to take questions as a work example. We want to take questions as work example. X limited. X limited makes three products. A, B, and C. For which unit costs, machine hours and selling prices are as follows. We have products A, B, and C. We have machine hours 10, 12, and 14. Then we have direct materials at 50 cent per kg. We have seven dollar, which is 14 kg, six kg, uh, six dollar, which is 12 kg, five dollar at 10 kg. We have direct wages at 7.50 dollar per hour, and that will give us nine dollar at 1.2 hours. Then we also have six hours at 0 0.8 hours. We have three dollar at zero point four hours. We have variable overheads, which is three dollar each. We have machine cost total nineteen dollar, fifteen dollar, and eleven dollar. We have selling price twenty five, twenty, and fifteen. We have contribution six. 5 and 4. Then we have sales demand for the period is limited as follows. We have product A, 4,000. Product B, 6,000. Product C, 6,000. Company policy is to produce a minimum of 1,000 units of product A. The supply of materials in the period, the supply of materials in the period is unlimited. The supply, the supply, the supply of materials in the period is unlimited, but machine hours are limited to 200,000. And direct labor, direct labor hours to 5,000 required. Indicate the production levels that should be adopted for the three products in order to maximize profitability and state the maximum contribution. So that is the question. So we want to solve this question. Following the steps I have given, the very first step is to calculate or is to identify the limiting factor. Now, there are two potentially limiting factors here. One is machine hours. Machine hours are limited to 200,000. And the other one is direct labor hours, which is limited to 5,000. Those are the two potentially limiting factors. Remember, I've told you that this topic centered on a single limiting factor, meaning that 
you are not expected to have more than one limiting factor. I've told you that where the limiting factors are more than one, you are expected to apply linear programming. So, since we are given two potentially limiting factors, out of these two potential limiting factors, only one of it will actually be limited. So, that is why you need to be sure, you need to confirm which of these two is actually the limiting factor. So, now, let's confirm if machine hours. Step one. Confirm if machine hours is limited. Confirm if machine hours, machine hours is the limiting factor. Limiting factor. So, we want to know if the available machine hours of 200,000 will be adequate for the production to be able to attain this demand, to be able to attain these levels of demand for the three products, 4,000 for A, 6,000 for B, and 6,000 for C. You want to know if these 200,000 machine hours will be adequate for that production. So we are the 200,000 will be adequate. That means machine hour is not the limiting factor. But we are it is not adequate. That means that will actually be the limiting factor. I've told you that we are going to have only one limiting factor. You can't have two limiting factors in the same problem, except you are to consider them independently. You are to consider them separately. That is where you are to consider maybe machine hours on its own, where it is the limiting factor, and you are to solve the problem, assuming machine hours is the limiting factor. Then another case, you take direct labor hours, to be the limiting factor. Where well, that is the case, that means the problems are independent. You are going to solve them independently. But in this case, so they will be solved. Uh, you want to confirm which one is actually the limiting factor. So, we want to confirm if machine hours is the, uh, will be the limiting factor. So we have products. There are three products involved. Product A, B, and C. Now check. How many machine hours will be required to produce one unit of product A? To produce one unit of A, 10 machine hours will be required. And the number of units of product A to manufacture is 4,000 units. So that means the total machine hours that will be required to produce the whole 4,000 units of product A will be 40,000. At least 10,000 units per hour. I mean 10, uh, 10 machine hours per unit times the number of units of 4,000. Therefore, product B, we have 12 hours, 12 machine hours to achieve one unit of product B. And the number of units of product B demanded is 6,000 units. The number of units is 6,000. So we can have 12 times 6,000. And that will give us 72,000 machine hours. This is machine hours. Then for C, the number of units demanded, I mean the number of machine hours for a unit is 40 machine hours. And the number of units demanded is 6,000 units of product C. So the total machine hours required will be 14 times 6,000, and that will give us, so if you have 14 times 6,000, that will give us 84,000. If you now add the 3, if you add it, 84,000 plus 72,000 plus 40,000, that will give us 196,000 machine hours. This is machine hours required. This is what is required to be able to achieve the demand, to be able to produce, to be able to achieve the level of production. That, that is 4,000 for A, 6,000 for B, and 6,000 for C. You will require 196,000 machine hours. Then how much is the machine hours available? 
you have 200,000 machine, 200, machine hours available. That means the available is 200,000. If the available is 200,000, the one available is more than what is required for the production. There will be a surplus. That is excess machine hours of 4,000 hours. Excess of 4,000 machine hours. Since the 4,000 machine hours is in excess, that means machine hours is not the limiting factors. Machine hours is adequate. Therefore, it's not the limiting factor. Let's confirm the labor. Labor hours. We want to confirm if this 5,000 labor hours, we want to know if it will be adequate for the production. We want to know if the 4,000 uh, 5,000 labor hours will be adequate for production. So now, go back to the how many hours will be required to produce one unit of A. You have 1.2 hours, direct labor hour, direct wages. 1.2 hours for a unit of product A. So we can have 1.2 times the production. The demand for product A is 4,000. 1.2 times 4,000, and that will give us 4,800 hours. That is for labor hours. For B, the labor hours required to produce one unit of B is 0 0.8 hours. 0 0.8 times the demand for B is 6,000. 0 0.8 times 6,000, and that will give us 4,800 as well. For C, it will require 0 0.4 hours per unit. So we have 0 0.4 hours. The demand for C is also 6,000 times 6,000. 0 0.4 times 6,000. And that will give us 2,400 labor hours. How much will that be the labor hours required? 2,400 plus 4,800 plus 4,800. Total 12,000 hours. To be able to achieve the level of demand, 12,000 labor hours will be required. But the available labor hours is 5,000. The one available is 5,000. And what you require to be able to meet up with the demand is 12,000. So, if available is 5,000 hours, then there is a shortfall. Shortfall. So, shortfall of 7,000. Because you require 12,000 for production, and what you have is 5,000. This 5,000 will not be enough for you to be able to produce what will be up to 4,000 of A, 6,000 of B, and 6,000 of C. Therefore, labor hours is the limiting factor. Labor hours is the limiting factor. Having confirmed the labor hours to be the limiting factor, the next thing is to calculate, the second step is to calculate the contribution margin. And that has been given directly. You have been given your contribution to be 6 for A, 5 for B, and 4 for C. So that means step 2 may not be needed or may not be required. Then step three, which is not going to be a step two in this one. Step three, which will be the step two, is to calculate the contribution per unit of the limiting factor. Since our limiting factor is labor hours, therefore you are going to calculate the contribution per labor hours. Contribution contribution per labor hours. Contribution per labor hours. So, there are three products. 
product A, B, and C. Products. Products A, B, and C. You have contribution. Contribution margin. Contribution margin for A is 6. That of B is 5. Why that of C is 4? So we have 6, 5, 4. That is the unit contribution. 6, 5, 4. Remember, you want to calculate contribution per labor hours. The labor hours required for a unit of A is 1.2. 0 0.8 and 0 0.4. We have 1.2, 0 0.8, 0 0.4. So labor hours. Labor hours. 1.2, 0 0.8 and 0 0.4. So now contribution per labor hours now. Contribution per labor labor hours. So we have 6, 6 divided by 1.2, 6 divided by 1.2, that will give us $5 per labor hour. 5 divided by 0 0.8, that will give us $6.25 per labor Hour. Then we have 4 divided by 0 0.4. 4 divided by 0 0.4. That will give us $10 per labor hour. The next step is to rank it in descending order. We have ranking. So, the highest one is 10. That will be ranked first. Followed by 6.25, that will be ranked second. And $5 will be ranked third. That is the next thing. Then we have, we want to allocate it. But now, let's go back to the question. Sales demand for the period is limited as follows. Company policy, you have to go through that policy. Very important. Company policy is to produce a minimum of 1,000 units of product A. You have to produce minimum of 1,000 for product A. If minimum of 1,000 for product A should be produced, then that means on the basis of the policy, how many hours will be required? So, uh, on the basis of the policy, how many hours will be required for that 1,000? Since product A, since 1.2 hours will be required to produce a unit of product A. We have 1.2 times 1,000. That will give us 1,200. 1,200 hours. If 1,200 hours out of the available hours of 5,000. If 1,200 out of 5,000 labor hours is allocated to product A, this is a prior priority allocation. Let me call it priority allocation. Priority allocation. Out of 5,000 hours, 1,200 has been given to product A. Then that means you'll be left with balance of 5,000 minus 1,200. That will give us 3,800 labor hours. We want to allocate the 3,800 labor hours to all the product because a minimum of 1,000 of A should be produced. We were not being told that that 1,000 should be the only unit of A that should be produced. So that is the minimum. That means you can produce more than 1,000 units of A. But that 1,000, which is the priority allocation, have to be considered first. 
So now the next thing is a location table. A location table. I said the first thing you have periods. Or let me you have ranking. The one ranked first, second, and third. After ranking, you have products. Which of the products is ranked first? Product C is ranked first. You have C. Then the one ranked second is product B. You have B. Why A ranked third? Then we have demand. For A, a pop C, the number of units of product C demanded is 6,000 units. And 6,000 units for B as well. Why 4,000 for A? Please try to subscribe to this channel to keep up with the video lectures that will be uploading or added to my YouTube channel from time to time. So, product C. The demand is 6,000. For B, 6,000. For, for A, is 4,000. Now, out of 4,000 for A, you have considered 1,000 on that must. You must produce 1,000 of that A. That means the balance you are left with for product A will be 3,000. Then the next one is the limiting factor. And our limiting factor is the labor hour. Labor hour. For product C, the labor hours required for a unit of product C is 0 0.4. Then you now have labor hours allocated. So how many hours will be given to product C to be able to produce up to 6,000 units of product C? So you have 6,000 times 0 0.4. That will give us 2,400. That means 2,400 hours will be required to be able to produce 6,000 units of product C. Then, let's have cumulative. Cumulative. Cumulative labor hours. That is cumulative limiting factors. So you still have 2,400. Then you have balance. How many labor hours will you be left with? Remember what you have to allocate is 3,800. Out of 3,800, you have given 2,400 to product C. Then you'll be left with balance of 1,400. Then product miss. Since there are sufficient hours for product C, then you will still be able to produce the whole 6,000 for product C. 6,000. So that is product miss. So you produce 6,000 units of product C. For product B, demand is 6,000. The labor hours required for a unit of B is 0 0.8. You have 0 0.8. 0 0.8 times 6,000 will give us 4,800. 
You are supposed to have 4,800 here. But what you are left with for allocation is 1,400, which is not up to the 4,800 required for Kudor B. So, all you can do is to give the remaining 1,400 hours you are left with to B. Since you don't have up to 4,800, you ought to have allocated to this. Then cumulative now will be 2,400 plus 1,400, which will give us 3,800. Then balance will be lean. Then what will be your product miss? How many units of product B can you manufacture with 1,400 labor hours? To get the number of units, just divide the 1,400 hours you can allocate or you have allocated to product B by 0 0.8. That is the hours required for a unit. 1,400 divided by 0 0.8. That will give us 1,750 units. That means this 1,400 hours balance we are left with can only produce 1,750 units of product B. Therefore, the means of that product will be 1,750. No further hours. You don't have further hours. Normally, product A is supposed to be 1.2 hours for a unit. But since the entire 3,800 hours balance we are left with have been allocated between product B and C, no further hours can be allocated to product A. So cumulative, so no further hours. So now, what will that be your product means now? Our product means Product means for product, product A, you can produce 1,000 units, which was the priority allocation. For product B, product B, you can produce 1,750 units of product B. 1,750 units. For product C, you can still produce 6,000 units of product C, 6,000 units. So that is the product miss. I've rubbed off the requirements of the questions. In that requirement also, you have to calculate the maximum contribution. The maximum contribution, or you have to calculate the contribution. So, now, the contribution per unit of the product, now, we want to calculate the contribution. Contribution, that is the further requirements in the question. Product A, B, and C. The contribution per unit of A is 6. 6 times the number of units of A produced, which is 1,000. 6 times 1,000 will be 6,000. For B, the contribution per unit of product B is 5, $5. Times the unit of B manufacture, which is 1,750. 5 times 1,750. And that will give us 8,750. For C, the contribution per unit is $4, which is 4 times the production is 6,000, or the demand. 4 times 6,000 will give us 24,000. So when you sum it up, you get the maximum contribution. which will be 38,750. 38,750.
Philippe Tillet.